Callum is the older brother of Ezrin, the current king of Catalus. If they were full brothers by blood, this would make Callum's claim to the throne better than Ezrin's, as he is the older brother. But this is not the case, as Callum is not the son of King Harrow. Thus, Ezrin is the one who takes the throne. Now, Ezrin is a nice kid. He clearly cares about his ideals a lot. He's very committed to peace. But he is not the smartest ruler in the world, by a long shot. He's immature, and he's easily manipulated by Viren, who steals the throne away from Ezrin. For those of you who don't remember, and I would not personally blame you for not remembering, considering how long it has been since Season 3, Ezrin really wants peace. He wants it more than anything. When the other human kingdoms approach him as the leader of Catalus and try and get him to declare war on the elven kingdoms, he refuses. They're shocked and appalled, considering what the elves have done to the humans and what they've done specifically to Ezrin's father, the king. So, they eventually grow more irritated and say that if Ezrin does not help them invade Zadia, these other kingdoms will invade Catalus. This rightly freaks Ezrin out, but instead of acquiescing to their demands, he makes a very strange choice. Things get pretty convoluted from here, and to be quite frank, I don't really understand it whenever I watch the Dragon Prince, but the upshot of it is that Ezrin allows himself to be chained up, and then Viren takes the throne. Catalus is not invaded, but Viren then goes and uses the armies of Catalus, along with all the other armies, to invade Zadia, but not before transforming them into dark magic zombies, and also allowing Erevos to act through him. By the end of Season 3, Viren is basically just a puppet, and Erevos has become the one who's really in control. This is what Ezrin's vaunted commitment to peace leads to. It's kind of dark, actually. I am reminded more than a little of the first three seasons of Game of Thrones, where actions actually had consequences, where if you did something stupid in service of noble goals that didn't matter, it was still a stupid move and it would be punished. Being noble and big-hearted just became being sanctimonious if that nobility and big-heartedness didn't lead to actual positive changes in the world. It just led to people proclaiming themselves to be morally superior to those around them while ignoring the practical calculus of the titular Game of Thrones and thus dying ingraciously. This happened to Ned and this happened to his son, Rob. And those are not the only examples of that happening. What happens to Ezrin here is kind of an echo of that. Now, I'm not saying the Dragon Prince needs to be that kind of show. I'm not even saying the Dragon Prince should be that kind of show. The only people who think all fantasy should be grimdark fantasy are a bunch of teenage edgelords who have just watched an R-rated movie for the first time. What I am saying, though, is that Ezrin's actions during this season are not the best. If I were to be generous, I would say that he's just a little misguided. If I were to be ungenerous, I'd say his actions were genuinely dangerous. Thankfully, it all works out for Ezrin, Callum, and our team by the end. Good triumphs over evil. And Ezrin becomes the king again. But y'all should ask yourselves, if you were a citizen of Catalus, would you want Ezrin to be your king? Well, he's a little kid, and he is kind-hearted, and he does want what's best for everyone. None of that 
entirely excuses what he does. You can better understand his state of mind when you consider his youth and his naivete and his idealism, but none of that changes how his actions led to him basically withdrawing from the kingship voluntarily because he wants to be noble and not do anything morally dubious, even though allowing himself to be chained up leads to Viren committing all sorts of terrible acts under the aegis of the throne of Catalus. All of this would have been prevented if Ezrin had not surrendered like that. If I were Ezrin and this was happening to me, I would try to elicit help from my advisors, but considering that the loyalty of the advisors in Catalus is somewhat split between Ezrin and Viren, perhaps going to the advisors is not the best move. But do you know who Ezrin could go to? Someone who has learned a lot journeying around the world for three seasons. Someone who, no, does not have the natural charisma of a leader, but has a lot of nerdy charm nonetheless. Someone who has legitimacy to an extent as the stepson of the king and the son of the beloved and now sadly deceased Sarai. Callum. Now I'm not saying Callum would want the job, in fact I'm quite certain he would not, but I am saying that if Ezrin offered him the job and said you would be a better king than me, I trust you to lead the kingdom more than I trust myself, Callum would probably take that job. And to be quite honest, Ezrin wouldn't be wrong to say this, Callum is kind of the man for the job. He kind of is a better prospect for leading the kingdom than anyone else. Now we don't know how long the time skip between seasons 3 and 4 will be, but if it is significant, then Callum will be approaching adulthood by the end of the season. He won't be the stumbling, awkward, goofy kid anymore. He'll still be a dork, but he'll be a dork with dignity and grace and experience and maturity. While he is not quite the warrior poet that he imagined later should be when he was a child, he nonetheless is much closer to that ideal than he was back in season one, and he's much closer to that ideal than, honestly, he believes he is. He underestimates himself. Now, I will say a part of this is just pure selfish wishing from me. I do want to see Callum and Rayla rule Catalus as king and queen. There is a glamour and an elegance to that that really appeals to me. And I'm a bit embarrassed of this because I'm a steadfast anti-monarchist in my actual politics. <laughs> But, please forgive me a little bit of fanboying here. Admittedly, wanting to see Callum on the throne is not just fanboying. There is a bit of justification for this. I do genuinely think he would be a better ruler than Ezrin or pretty much anyone else that we've seen in this world. Admittedly, he would run into problems because of the nature of his relationship with Rayla. Now, part of this is nothing more than boilerplate bigotry, but there is a level on which it's deeper than that. Callum could be thought of as a sort of usurper if he does not play his cards right. His romantic partner is the person who was raised by the leader of the people who killed Harrow, the former king. Callum getting into a relationship with her is bad for reasons beyond just the distrust between humans and elves in this world. It certainly does not help matters that Callum is not related to Harrow by blood, even though Harrow did, in fact, consider Callum his son. And like Ezrin, Callum would face quite a conundrum considering 
how to try and end the war between the humans and the elves. As mature adult viewers of the show that we are, I don't think it'd be outrageous to say among us that Ezrin made a lot of mistakes and that he's probably not the best leader for this country. But it's not like the situation he was facing is an easy one. There is no straightforward answer to this. Just because we know Ezrin did the wrong thing doesn't mean we know what the right thing is. Obviously, what would be best for everyone is for peace to prosper between the humans and the elves. But wanting to make peace when your opponent wants to make war just makes you look like Neville Chamberlain. And it is true that while we cannot condone the behavior of the humans who want revenge on the elves, we can at least kind of understand where they're coming from, especially considering the needless brutality that was the death of King Harrow. If peace is to indeed prosper between the humans and the elves, the humans need legitimate reason to believe the elves are going to argue in good faith and not just constantly keep attacking the humans. Perhaps if Rayla is able to talk to the elves and convince them to give peace a chance and stop assassinating people and try and work with the humans to build a brighter future, then the humans could be persuaded to, in turn, give the elves a chance. But even if that occurs, it would be very difficult to wash away centuries of distrust and bloodlust. Still, Callum would try his best to find a way to resolve the situation peacefully, drawing from his experiences adventuring through the world these last three years, learning a lot about himself and this world and the conflict between humans and elves. He would fare better than Ezrin, who again surrendered in order to preserve his moral principles instead of trying to work out a better solution for everyone. I think Callum would stumble a lot early in his kingship, but he would eventually, with a lot of trial and error, become a great and respected leader. He's shown that he has the capacity to do so. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this one. Keep watching The Dragon Prince. It is a brilliant show and hopefully we'll get more of its brilliance soon. Here's hoping the hiatus ends sooner rather than later. It's been what now? Let's see. Last season was in November 2019. I'm recording this in April 2021. You do the math. It's been a while. About a year and a half. Hopefully we get more of the show soon. Anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. That I can promise you. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.